Greetings to my team of 144 all star seeds light workers and way showers. Today is 5162019936 a.m. The 36 and the 9. Tesla said the key to the universe is the 36 and 9. And that's coming through for many people, especially the 144, which also just popped up on my screen. As I thought it. These energies are very intense. I want to give you a few updates. I only have about half hour here. Uh, let's see here. These energies are very intense right now. <clears throat> I'm going to give a few updates and then read the latest uh, transmission from Michael Love. <clears throat> Many people are experiencing these ascension symptoms with these solar rays that are coming into earth this weekend friday saturday sunday we are going to be inundated with a massive plasma wave from the central sun emanating through our sun yesterday i was contacted by several people about major ascension symptoms they're experiencing one their wife went to the hospital in the morning she thought she had strep and they didn't find she did not have it and this is part of that the throat from the last couple of weeks the throat you know from the new moon and these energies coming in for the throat chakra and then for this full moon on the 18th this saturday in scorpio this for the, the root chakra, the lower dantian. So, also, a friend, a divine feminine counterpart, contacted me, and she felt like yesterday she was ready to leave the matrix. She was feeling like blacking out, and then she laid in the sun and ground into the earth, and then she could had trouble even moving every joint in her body was inflamed hurting severe pain i had to go to her to uh, transmit some chi some kunlun energy healing energy and do a little bit of body work and then uh, a couple people was talking about the last few days with episodes of the dark night of the soul which i understand all these things i've been through these many times since four years old, I've had hundreds of dark nights of the soul. You know, I kind of chuckle when I hear a teacher say, I had this dark night of the soul, and then I had this awakening, and I always think, you lucky son of a gun. I had to go through hundreds and hundreds of dark nights of the soul to attain any kind of awareness. No, I'm just kidding. This isn't a... I'm not kidding, I did go through hundreds, but this isn't a contest in suffering. <clears throat> you know, most of the masters and teachers I've trained with and studied their works and teachings, they talk about the great suffering they went through to attain their awakening, to attain their enlightenment, and that once they attained it, they realized that it's not necessary to have to go through that much suffering to put their bodies through it. And I've been through it. I mean, I, there were hundreds of times, you know, sitting in full lotus. My late teens, early 20s, I would go to the temple, the monastery, and they call full lotus posture, where you sit with your right foot on your left thigh and your left foot on your right thigh, it's, thigh. it's like a, you're almost wrapping yourself up like a pretzel. And as you sit there for a half hour and then an hour, I can't tell you how many times my legs totally fell asleep and it felt like knives were jabbing into my thighs and knees. And But I would sit totally still and go into the silence to where like people that witnessed me at times, there'd be, you know, most people are moving around and getting up or doing whatever resituating people saw me sitting there and they'd come up to me after practice and say man you were sitting there like a mountain 
I didn't, they would watch. They said I couldn't even see me breathe because I would go so deep into the stillness. You didn't, I watched you the whole time and you, I didn't even see you move once because <laughs> I was pretty extreme. You know, I thought hey, that's how the master sat. So that's how I'm sitting, you know, I'm being Taurus. I'm pretty stubborn, but I can't tell you how many times, every time you sit like that, at least for me and most people, your legs totally fall asleep because it cuts off the circulation, at least one or sometimes both. And then your back. Sometimes as you're sitting there, you know, with a straight spine after a half hour, depending on the energies, it, you know, you can feel like someone's sticking a knife in your back. So the sensei or roshi, roshi, sensei is teacher in Japanese. Roshi is like master or teacher in Japanese, like the Zen masters, they call them roshi, R-O-S-H-I. They would come around with this like bamboo type stick and would freak people out sometimes. But as you as they're walking behind you, you bow off and they hit you in the shoulders, they whack you with them, but that gets the chi flowing through your body and it's almost uh, you look forward to it because it it's that moment where it's not that it's abuse, but people sometimes would see you getting whacked with a bamboo stick. <laughs> but it was hit in a certain way where they hit acupuncture points in your in your, um, what do they call those, your traps or whatever, you know, your, from your shoulder to your neck, <clears throat> and it would get the chi flowing, and it would loosen up the spine, and, and get the energies flowing smoothly, so, but this, we realize that once you realize your true nature, that that suffering wasn't necessary, but most people do go through that great suffering because that in that suffering, which I talked about that in the video yesterday about the lotus flower coming out of the mud, you know, the muck, the dirt, the filth, to come up, reach into this, through the water, into the sky, into the ear, to bloom in this beautiful blossom. So that symbolizes, you see that, like the Buddha sitting on the lotus flower because the lotus many times symbolizes the awakening or enlightenment because it's such a beautiful, meta mystical plant. I also wanted to real quick talk about, um, I'm going to talk about a couple things and then read the transmission, but um, last night I received another massive download in the middle of the night. Then woke up with the root chakra. Very sensitive, very intense energies. It's like the Kundalini waking up, you know, reawakening that fire, the phoenix rising from the ashes. I'll talk more about that in a minute. I want to also real quick address um, someone. I talked yesterday about the sandhill crane walking up to me, and someone said it was probably a. Uh, great blue here and then the only reason I mention that because I know how rare that is because sandhill cranes are more timid than some other birds but I know the difference between a great blue heron and sandhill crane I'm, I wasn't offended that someone thought I was mistaken because I, I know that's the only reason I mentioned it for a sandhill crane to come up to you, it's very rare, but this is another sign of what we're going to see on the new earth, where the new earth is manifesting, it's accelerating, and it'll be where the creatures, the animals of Gaia will no longer be afraid of humans, because that's part of the vision that many people are seeing, where humans and animals walk hand in hand. And, you know, the great blue herons, that's one of my spirit animals, and I've spent hundreds and hundreds of hours taking thousands of pictures. I've been doing nature and wildlife photography for 25 years, and 10 years of that, I shot thousands of slides, and in the last 15 years, thousands and thousands of digital images. I just don't have time to edit most of them on my website, Nature Lover Photographer, I only have probably 88 because truthfully I'd much rather be out in nature, going for hikes, t 
taking photos than actually sitting in front of a computer and editing them. I wish I could find someone that would go through, because all the slides would need to be scanned and then edited, uploaded, labeled. It's very time-consuming. And then the digital images have to all be edited and uploaded and edited, um, labeled. So I just don't have the time very time consuming. I use Lightroom and Photoshop to edit those. <clears throat> when I was walking uh, the Medicine Way, the Red Road, there were several times that Great Blue would leave their feathers for me and it was part of the manifestation, the law of attraction, because being one of my spirit animals I would visualize the feather and they would leave it and after that I'd even though I spent hundreds of t times with many different great blues, that um, they've never left their feather since then. That was about 20 years ago. And what's funny is about, I'm not great with time, everything's becoming more spatial, but about 15 years ago, I was at the same nature preserve I was at yesterday. And... I was shooting, I was doing videography, I, I used to shoot film too, I still do, here and there, I do photography and videography, I've, I've been published like in Birds and Blooms magazine and several other publications and calendars and I used to shoot for a stock agency and that, but it's just something I do more for fun anymore. There's so much competition, it's difficult to make money unless if you work for National Geographic or something. So about 15, 20 years ago, I was doing a lot of videography, and I was at the same nature preserve, and <clears throat> I don't know if it was the same sandhill crane or a different one, but I was filming them with my camera, and it walked right up to me and started pecking on the legs of my tripod. <clears throat> and a woman, a female photographer, was walking up and witnessed it, and she took slides, you know, photos, and she ended up getting my information and sending me a slide of me on the ground, you know, sitting on the ground with the camera and the tripod and the sandhill crane pecking at the legs, and <clears throat> she knew what a rare occurrence it was, but I'm not sure if it's the same sandhill crane. I doubt it. But it could be the offspring, and maybe it got the the same kind of courage from its from its mother. So yeah, we we have lots of egrets. Sand. Uh, there's at this preserve. There's a only uh, there's a breeding pair of sandhill cranes, and then there's many great white egrets and great blue herons, and I know them all well. I've spent a lot of time with these creatures. They're my brothers and sisters. So I just wanted to clarify that in case of, because I know how rare it is. That's the only reason I mentioned it. But it's not a big deal. So on to the last night. And this is the third major download I've had in, I think, the last three weeks. And each time as I go into that stillness as I'm, laying in bed under the pyramid <clears throat> and I've had many I have a copper pyramid I've been sleeping under for like 20 years it's hanging from my ceiling it has this crystal from the apex and then feathers that the great spirit has gifted me in the four corners of the pyramid because that's for the winged nation for the messengers and it uh, to help with my flight in the astral plane so each time these before these codes came in, I felt kind of like I was falling as I go into the deep stillness and and almost blacking out, feeling like I'm leaving the matrix. Like all three times I felt like this is it. Time to disappear. Time to ascend. And then the codes start coming in, and last night it was the most complex sequences of images. It was almost like letters and symbols that were upside down, flowing down, and these very com they're getting more complex each download that I'm getting. So in the next few days, 
I don't want to do some of the transmissions, some of the frequencies and energies, because I don't want to blow my phone up. But once I get my new mic, the Yeti, the abominable snowman, I'll start doing some more of these frequency energy transmissions. Hopefully I won't destroy another mic. But whatever, it'll be worth it in the end. <clears throat> so leave a um, comment below this video on what you're experiencing. I know many, many people. I put out the video yesterday about the solar activity and the symptoms that people are experiencing. <clears throat> like I said, four people in one day, four connections contacted me by phone. A sister of mine also called and was saying she's probably going to go to the hospital because of abdominal bloating and um, intestinal blockage or something. I mean, she's had CF for you know, cystic fibrosis for 50 years, so it's not uncommon, but it, it was something very strange in the last few days that was occurring. And she said she felt, you know, put on like eight pounds in a, eight days or something and not eating. <laughs> so it's pretty crazy stuff. I know many people are feeling like they're losing it. Um, just know that everything is going to balance out. You just have to keep going through and through and through. It's what one of the Zen masters used to teach us. Keep on going through and through until you reach the promised land until you reached nirvana it's like you never give up you never look back and i would never say never it's just it's one of those things where we keep plugging along until the fruits of our labor manifest our roots are deeply grounded into the 3d to where our 4D bodies, our 4D light bodies are reaching up into the heavens and then from our branches the fruit will bloom, you know, will grow, the flowers will, will blossom and we will manifest this new earth together. So no fear, just know that you are not alone. Many people are experiencing these energies, these symptoms. And we're all feeling it, brothers and sisters. So this weekend's going to be a huge weekend for these waves coming in, for the codes coming in. And then the next few weeks we'll be integrating those codes and grounding them into Gaia, bringing them into Gaia, into the ley lines of Earth, into the dragon lines, as our DNA is being transformed from double strand to the 12 stranded crystalline sequence. As we release and purge the old 3D matrix, we let in and allow the 4D and 5D into our DNA, into our atoms, into our cellular structure, which is the code, the programming. The codes of the DNA. So the 37 and the 73 are coming through, which the 37 is the external or the earth, and the earth, and the internal is the 73 or what we call heaven. So we're bringing the 37 and the 73 together, merging heaven and earth. To help with this manifestation process. And we're all doing this. All star seeds are like grounding rods into the field. What I call the field. Which is the, the chi or the vital life force of Gaia. Of the universe. Which we are. We are one with this, with this energy. We are part of this energy. So today's, this is from last night, from Michael Love, or yesterday. 
the event, major DNA upgrade in progress, Ascent, moderate ascension symptoms, 5152019. Now he says moderate, but the people, it could be moderate to extreme for depending on what we have left to purge, what we have left to release. And that's based on my experience and what other light workers and star seeds that are contacting me are saying and experiencing. The Earth Alliance and Earth Space Weather Agencies are monitoring heightened activity around the sun as light forces continue deflecting different frequencies of light from the central sun towards planet Earth. A massive solar filament has turned direct Earth facing and is directing powerful gamma rays towards the planet. This huge filament is unstable and superactive and has been ejecting out multiple moderate CMEs. A large coronal hole is also turning towards Earth at the same time and is streaming super high speed solar winds towards the Earth planet. Planetary space weather forecasts show inbound moderate solar windstorms over the next few Earth days. These solar winds contain central sun Akashic light data and are traveling at over 1 million miles per hour and contain nano-sized magnetic ionized particles that strip right through the human body genome, clearing out all low vibrational energies and recoding DNA to a higher order. Intense pressure has been applied to the Earth's magnetic field over the last 48 hours, as seen in red on the current geospace magnetosphere. And wait, there's more. To make all of this even more intense, 5D 40 hertz gamma beams from the central sun have been blasting us every few days for several weeks now. These 40 hertz energy beams are being intelligently deflected to Earth by advanced, benevolent beings assisting with the ascension of the starseeds and humans on the surface of the planet. These powerful gamma laser streams originate from the central sun at the galactic core and refracted to Earth via massive light ships that are docked around the sun. Russian DNA science proves that DNA is instantly recoded when subjected to gamma laser light. These 5D level energy spikes can be monitored on the Schumann resonance chart, also on our Space Weather tool page. And that's on 5dearthproject.com. Starseeds all around the globe have been reporting moderate to strong ascension symptoms over the last two Earth days. Here are some res reported ascension symptoms from the last light influx. Dull headache, accelerated dehydration, back, kidney pains, third eye pressure, sinus aches, feeling spaced out and disoriented, tiredness, sleep difficulty, and vivid dreams. These ascension symptoms are results of the natural DNA activation process that is occurring in this cosmos. There is no ser cause for serious concern as long as you hydrate, practice gentle self-care, avoid stress as much as possible, get, get some rest and sleep, and just take it slow and easy until these light codes integrate into the body. You will feel super awesome and be more advanced and much stronger when this is done, so hang in there. Let us know what you're experiencing from this latest solar photon light blast. Godspeed, great beings of light. And that's from Michael Love and the Pleiadians. And I also have conf can confirm that these plasma waves this weekend are going to be more intense and help with this ascension process. So just be aware, be awake, get plenty of rest, drink plenty of water, get out to nature if you can. It also helps, you know, if you take a bath, you know, bring some crystals into the water. I like to put a crystal on my middle dantian, you know, that's the heart center, the heart chakra in the center of your chest as I lay in the water. I'll put, um, use Epsom salt with uh, lavender and chamomile. You can do, use aromatherapy, burn some incense right now. 
what is very beneficial is frankincense. Frankincense and sandalwood. Also, you know, lavender is good to help relax the mind, relax the body. Where the mind goes, the chi flows. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining me here today. I wanted to thank everyone that is joining us on our CBD team for to raise funds for the Ecuador Healing Retreat Center. I spoke with someone on the team last night, and they said they're planning to potentially go down to Ecuador to spend some time there, travel around, get to learn the country, get to make friends, learn more about the culture, and look for land for a reasonable price. So I'll keep you up to date on that. We have I have several connections in Ecuador that own land and that a couple of them have a retreat type center and one couple, husband and wife, are engineers building sustainable buildings down there and they own a lot of property supposedly, a lot of land, which I have to follow up to, to learn more about what they're doing. But we're, it's the whole project's in the development and research stage until I can raise enough funds to actually go there myself. I would need to spend at least a month to travel around. I'm looking many r synchronicities with Vilcabamba, and it's spelled V-I-L-C-A-M-B-A, -A, something like that, V. It's on my uh, Prime Disclosure page under um, Dao de Ecuador. Yeah, it's V-I-L-C-A-B-A-M-B-A, -A -A, Vilcabamba. So if you'd like to contribute and be part of this fundraising project, we're using a company called CTFO that makes CBD products, cannabinoid oils, that are organic and non-GMO, high quality products. You can either click the link in the description below or, or go to cbdpeaceoil.com and sign up as a distributor. And I will be in contact in the future. I'm backed up a couple of weeks because we have 180 people on our team and I'm trying to help as many people as I can to help build their business. So it's it's a process. I'm just one person, so I'm trying to do the best I can to help as many people as I can. And I'm also meeting with someone today that spent the last month in Nepal learning how to build earth domes, you know, dome homes made out of earth, you know, made out of dirt and sandbags and some other techniques so I'll give you an update on that I call them moon cocoons or other people have coined that term they're these adobe type domes I think that one company is called Cal Earth they're in California it was an Iranian scientist that came up with the concept of these moon cocoons you can google search that and do some more research but my vision is a, is a huge dome in the center of the property, which would be a temple and a healing center. There would be different healing technologies and working with local natives and shamans and other healers. We have acupuncturists that are contacting us, body workers, yoga teachers, Reiki masters, you know, a whole Many, many people, at least a hundred people have contacted me that want to be part of this project and it resonates with them. So I wanted to thank everyone for reaching out. I'm trying to keep up with all the emails, the messages, the comments. <clears throat> I'm doing the best I can. So thank you for your patience. Hang in there. Stay in the heart center. Keep walking your path with heart. <clears throat> and we are doing it, brothers and sisters.
We are on mission. We are here to help all of humanity, all life, all beings through all dimensions through this collective ascension process. So I want to thank each and every one for your connection, for your love, for your light, <clears throat> for sharing with us your experiences. Much love, light, and blessings. I love you all. Namaste.